very frequently so yeah. I'm in tune with the work yep I want the people to get in tune with the work so you have the project out mm -hmm. reflections, reflections right? yes. talk, mm -hmm. talk to us about that um reflections was kind of like a two-year kind of like process that I mm -hmm. that I had going on um at the time when I made reflections I was down south mm -hmm. um so I was living down south almost I want to say five years okay. and then all of a sudden you know it was kind of like I left music and it was like ah, I don't want to do music no more and then Believe it or not, my wife was like, man, you don't do music no more. You don't write nothing, you don't do mm -hmm. nothing. And at the time I was going through a lot, my uncle had passed. Um, a lot of things with my brother was going on and stuff like that, personal-wise. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I'm going to drop a project. Funny thing about the name of the project, one day I was in the, in the bathroom and I was just looking at myself in the mirror and was like, okay, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's call it Reflections. People want to know who you are as an artist. I like that. So for me, it was kind of like, it was a no-brainer. So that process came... Um, it came about, say, five years ago, and then now, probably like eight years later, I brought Reflections back, back to the fold and said, hey, mm -hmm. let me go ahead and re-release it, because when I was down south, it was just me. Yeah. So I didn't really have no outlets like you, or outlets to talk to, or people in music to talk to and say, hey, man, um, what can I do with this project? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's, what, that's how Reflections came about. Talk just a little bit, was there any kind of battle internally with yourself as right? you said the project was something that you mm -hmm. started living yeah. down south mm -hmm. you know roughly five years ago yeah and now to want to put it out today in this climate of hip-hop you being the kind of artist that mm -hmm. you are was there any kind of hesitation along the way to say man do i do i kind of modernize it mm -hmm. or do i stick to the game plan that i always had when i was writing for me it's kind of like i, I love the golden era so for me, the 90s was, was my thing. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, they always stuck to their guns. I mean, you had a couple of artists that kind of wanted to go to the next level, like Jay-Z. Like Jay-Z was not the rapper he was on Reasonable Doubt, and then you look at Blueprint, two different things. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, I always, I always kind of was like, I wanted to kind of predicate myself off of being just me. Yeah. You know, not trying to do something else that somebody else is doing. So it kind of was a battle because you got to think about it. Me coming back now, it was in the era of probably mumble rap or yeah. you got to the clout. You know, you got to be popping. You got to be doing this. You got to be doing that. So for me, it was more or less about just sticking to my guns. Mm -hmm. And you know me, man. Like I'm always, I always keep it a hundred. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I always like to tell my truth and I always like to, you know, learn. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing of just going out and just, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do, do what. You know, little little DJ rap over here is doing. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do. I want to be in my own lane. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, it's kind of like it's a tug of war. It really is not a bad thing, but at the end of the day, you got to understand that whatever platform that you at, you got to utilize that platform and kind of get people to gravitate to you. So for me, it was more or less about just being real. You know, outside of the music. You know, so my music when it comes off, it's just me telling the truth. It's me seeing things that I've seen in my life mm -hmm. and just want to give the world that experience. You speaking know? of that, speaking of experiences mm -hmm. and your truth, for someone who is unfamiliar watching this today, who yeah. is Nopes 82? The man and the artist. Well, I, I'll give you a little bit of history. So I am I am from, from the New York area. Okay. Um, I, blew up, I grew up in um, East New York, Brooklyn. Um, and a lot of people always, you know, I don't want to tell my truth. But I grew up a pastor's kid. You know what I'm saying? Like my father was a was deep in the church. You know what I'm saying? So when we were smaller, me and my older brother, we had to do those things. Yeah. But when we got older, it's like, nah, man, I don't want to do this. And I had friends, and and you know me, man, I always keep it real. I'm not a street dude. Yeah. So I had friends that were in the streets. 
And you understand what I'm saying? They always used to guide me and be like, yo, man, you don't want none of the stuff that's in the streets. You don't want that because it's dangerous. it's dangerous. So it's like you don't want to be out there and get caught up doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. So me, it was always kind of like the Nas story. Like Nas was a little bit more in the streets, but with Nas, it kind of was like him seeing things. That's yeah. what made Nas. Nas seeing things in the project. So for me, growing up, it was more or less about, man, I like to write. So I used to walk around with notebooks in my hood, right? Write down what I see. Oh shoot, Miss Johnson having, the, you know, somebody robbed Miss Johnson. Somebody shot at this dude. Somebody did that. It was just experience. So me as a man, I'm I'm a, I'm a person where I absorb a lot of things. I'm like a sponge. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, that's what got me through, you know, being the person that I am, becoming a father. You know what I'm saying? Like seeing the things in the street that happened. Like yo, when I was a father, my, my father was always there for me. So I want to keep the same thing going with my kids. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, that's the type of that's the type of person I am. I'm genuine. You know, you can come to me about anything. You can ask me about anything. But I'm always never the person to say, I don't need no help. If mm -hmm. I need help, I'm going to reach out to you and say, hey, I need help with this. You know. Um, I appreciate that too. Mm -hmm. um, you lending your voice, yeah. your skill set to um, paint a picture for yeah. the hood, mm -hmm. kind of like. The, the, the third person. Yeah, the third person, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the, what they call it, like the bird's eye view. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that stories like that are just as important as uh, first person accounts, right? Yes. Like you have this, this uh, quote unquote, reality rap. Yes. Right? And mm -hmm. I think that is, sometimes it's too much pressure. And yeah. I'll just speak to this. It is. Too mm -hmm. much pressure to try to uh, portray something that you may not yeah. be mm -hmm. just to want to fit in. Yeah. So as you spoke about being a pastor's, mm -hmm. you know, son, um, it just you know some of those the, those battles and tribulations. It, that's a story. Yeah. There's someone somewhere who can relate to that. It's not mm -hmm. just about somebody who sold drugs or gang bang or you know uh, didn't make the yeah. NBA mm -hmm. and then they went to jail. Now they're trying to redeem themselves. So exactly. Your story is real as well. Man. Yes. I, I commend you on mm -hmm. sharing that, man. Appreciate it. Definitely. So bring us up to um right now. Reflections is out. Yep. Right? Reflections is um, out. What's some of the feedback you began? What what are the people feeling? Because that's the most important. Um. Right now, like most of the people, they, they love um, my single that I got out now, Suicide. Mm -hmm. And it kind of resonates into this, this, this era now because you have a lot of kids that are in this era that they either getting bullied, mm -hmm. they want to commit suicide, or they can't handle the pressures of the world, they want to commit suicide. Um, so for me, you know, that's one of the songs that people love. Like it's resonating with a lot of people and mm -hmm. stuff like that, which in, in fact, I actually got a video actually coming, for that, coming, coming out. out soon. Um, People like um, Running Back. Yeah. Running Back is another one of those laid back in your car feel. You can ride around New York City that's and listen missing. to. You need that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the music that people tap into. You yeah. know, you gotta think about it. We live in an era where everybody's on the go, right? You got your yeah. phone or you're streaming. Or, exactly. So if you're able to uh, deliver music that doesn't kind of get us off balance, yeah. like get us that, that gets you through the day music. Yeah, right? yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah, like Alice. Yeah. day music. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you, some of the other yeah. singles that people have been liking on um, another one that I did, with, which I, some of my singles I actually released earlier in the year, mm -hmm. and with the anticipation of the album actually coming out. So like mm -hmm. Golden Globes, I'm pretty sure you heard of Golden Globes. Definitely. Golden Globes was that right there. That record to me is my favorite record off the album because Golden Globes was kind of like our Black Golden Globes, yes. and it was kind of like my acceptance speech. So it was kind of like if I got, let's say, yeah. I got put on by a record label, and I get up there and I make my speech. I'm giving you my speech. I'm giving you who I actually am. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you look, if you think about the Golden Globes, the award show itself, you don't see a lot of yeah. black people actually. So it was kind of like a spin off. Speak on it. And then for me, it was kind of like the clips that I used. Yeah. So I used some of the people that actually um, talk on the Golden Globes, like um, Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. Some people might not know who that is. The, the guy that played Batman original first, Batman. the original Batman. Oh. And he said in his speech that it was rules and regulations that his family were predicated on. So for me, same rules that my father had. I'm a pastor's kid. So it's like, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. But you know what? At the end of the day, we're going to all show people respect and we're going to show each other love. That's how you get it back. And then at the end of it, it was like the pop. Like he was like, you know, he, he goes into this room. They got a, a, a lot of food, but the door is closed. Mm -hmm. And he's looking in. And he see that they got food, but they won't let him in. And, you know, please let me in. He's like, yeah, we are hungry. Please let us in. So it really it really resonated with me to use Pac at the end of that because it was my acceptance speech but it was more or less like i know i'm not on but you know what i'm gonna keep knocking on that door and i'm gonna keep knocking 
and I'm gonna keep knocking. Talk to us about the inspiration behind um, you know your marketing plan. As you said, you were mm -hmm. very, you were very consistent, yeah, um, and poignant in the way that you were releasing content and material mm -hmm. from the top of the year all the way through now. Yeah, um, and I like how you were. You were touching a lot of elements of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. You had like notes corner, you had the culture, culture corner, corner yeah. things going on. So talk about that, right? Cause, yeah. Cause I feel like that was you displaying your love for hip hop. Yeah. And and warming us up to the angle that you were coming with the music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's marketing right there. People yeah. don't understand what marketing is. Like yeah. you did that very well. So talk to us about that. So for me, like I have I have a um a sister that's, you know, she's kind of close to me and I knew her growing up and stuff like that. So before I actually came to the forefront to actually do the marketing plan I had, I had to sit down with her mm -hmm. and I ran it by her. And she was like, I think that's dope. Yeah. So for me, she's like, you love hip hop. So when I when I thought about the Notes Culture Corner, it kind of took a while. Like, so you, JB, if you've seen it, when yeah. I was on it, kind of was like, I didn't have no pictures yeah. to it. But yeah. I was like, let me see what people think about DJ Cool Her. It evolved. That's yeah, it thing. evolved. So it was like, I want people to understand that it, it, to do music, and, and nowadays everybody does music. I get that, but for me coming you know, up I in the know. yeah, <laughs> coming <laughs> coming up in the era that I come up in, it's kind of like back then a lot of stuff wasn't tolerated. Mm -hmm. So you had to be nice. Oh, yeah. You was gonna walk into that. You was gonna walk into that room and say it again. You had to be nice. You had to be nice. And right. if you wasn't nice, they was gonna let you know straight up. Because nowadays I think they just sugarcoat it. Yeah, yeah, man, he good, he good. Nah, man, it, it's, it's not good. Mm -hmm. So for me, my marketing plan came from, let me kind of get everybody interested in hip hop. Yeah. And it's still that way. Like I stopped doing the Culture Corner because I kind of got into the mode of the artist thing. Yeah. But the Culture Corner was to give you a history lesson. You know, I talked about LL uh, Cool G, I talked about Queen Latifah, I talked yeah. about um, Cool G Rap. A lot of people didn't, and a lot of people would hit me in the inbox, who Cool G Rap? Oh, but God. you rapping? Like you rapping though. Delete your page, whatever you are. <laughs> So, I mean, it was kind of like kind of like that. So my marketing plan came from that. What I did was from the culture corner, everybody was loving the culture corner and stuff like that. I kind of shifted if you've seen when Reflections was actually going to be coming out, mm -hmm. where I did the R, like ready, ready, ready for war or yeah. something. And I posted something to get everybody inspired. But my whole thing is that's how I am on it, right? It's about educating our people, you know, like you have to make sure that, you know, the people around you, as well as, you know, people outside that you want to resonate to your music, they understand that you, it's, it's for the people. That, mm -hmm. that, and that's how I am. I'm for the people. You know, I want to educate my, my black community. I'm and I want and I want everybody to understand that hip hop is, is ours. We we own hip hop. Oh, and, I, and, and my whole thing about it is now you got people actually twisting it. Where it's like, you know, because somebody told me a crazy thing, a crazy story I want to tell you, but it's kind of like like Eminem, and I respect Eminem as a as a as a lyricist or whatever. Like I like I like Eminem, mm -hmm. but he told me hip hop if it doesn't change and it doesn't go back to the roots and everybody starts talking about the history of hip hop, you know, 20 years from now they're gonna think Eminem was the one that started hip hop. And nothing nothing to take away from nothing to take away from M, but he reads a lot of books and he he told me this. He was like, you know, that's gonna be crazy. So he said, artists like you, yeah, you may not you may not get to the mountaintop, but at the end of the day, on your way. Going up to the mountain top, you, you want to leave an impact, yeah. and that's what I told you. Like when we had a conversation, you asked me about that. Like, what do you want to do? I want to leave an impact. It's not for me. It's not about the fame. It's not about you know. And, and people want to say, oh, he's crazy. Don't say about the money. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much good in my life. You understand what I'm saying? I'm doing what I need to do as a father, as a husband. But at the end of the day, it, it's it's more about the culture for me. Yeah. And if people kind of understand that, the culture would be a little bit more <clears throat> better than what it is now. I you know. You. So talk to us going forward, mm -hmm. the ending, ending this year and going into the new year. What are some of the things we could look for from Notes 82? Well, definitely I know for me it's more visual. So I definitely want to get my face out there. I want people to know who I am. So the suicide video, that's coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to do a video for Running Back, and I definitely want to do a video for another one of my songs, Book Bag. But 2020, man, 2020 is going to be is gonna be classic. Because if you think about it, Reflections is not an album that I worked on this year. That was an album that I worked on, I re-released it. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna say it here, man. I got another album that I'm working on next year. Exclusive, um, exclusive, exclusive. It's, it's exclusive. Um, I do got the title, I'm gonna get that too, man. Like it's called, it's called Watch The View. Um, <coughs> watch The View. Watch The View. So it's, it's okay. definitely different from Reflections and it's more or less like it was inspired by Kanye West's college dropout. So, 
I mean, in, in, in this era, a lot of people are scared to take chances, but it's gonna have 21 tracks on it. I'm already working on it. So 21? 21. Okay. 21. I respect it. Shoot. I believe people shooting their shot. Yeah. People say, hey, you gotta stay within the five to seven, no more than 10. So you got the heat, man. And don't get me wrong, it's a, grueling, it's a grueling process, JV. Uh, it, it's a grueling process, but at the end of the day, in order for me to make the impact that I wanna make, I need to make more music. Yeah. And, and, and this time, it's definitely gonna be more of a bigger, Marketing plan behind it. Um, it's definitely about making more music. That discography, that discography part of me has to be healthy. Yes. And substantial. Yep. To compete, right? Yep. You're, 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 you're in hip hop. You're in the fold of hip hop. So, now go in on them. Yep. Yep. You know what it is, yep. man. My God, no say yep. you. I appreciate you for stopping by. Appreciate you, man. Jason Bourne, the Jason Bourne yeah. experience. Power by the answers, though, man. My God, no lay mad with all the cameras. I was doing that. So, man, it was a fun spot. I believe in this. This is for me. Restitution, who got a life with a dirt?